Time for draft number 22. As we're climbing on up to the Mythics. I'm really pleased that even though we had some kind of stinkery situations, some drafts that started great and kind of went a little sideways in pack three. Um, some some goofy-ass bombs landing and owning me. But I'm I'm just happy that we're that we're we're treading water right now. We're at diamond three, so we don't need that much to go right in order to win the video game. Dude, Miglaw's Maze Crusher is unbelievably good. This is a ridiculously good card. It's a three mana four four. Remove an oil, it gets vigilance and menace. Remove two, it gets plus two plus two. Remove three, it destroys target artifact or enchantment. It's so good. So this card's great. Stinging Hivemaster is a weird card to me because I feel like with Stinging Hivemaster, if you have a lot of one and two drops, it's a killer three drop. But if you don't have, like if you go pass, pass, play this on three, it's kind of eh. Love Hex Gold Hover Wings, love Cephalopod Sentry, love Mandible Just a Car, even Just a CR. Quite a lot of good cards in there. Ooh, I really like Furnace Punisher. I love a Furnace Punisher. Now, there, there's Mirex, which... Great in long, grindy games. Just keep making all sorts of mites. But Furnace Punisher, I quite like. Menace is a really obnoxious keyword. And I think Gruel is probably the best color format. I haven't looked at any data about that, but it certainly feels like it after you've played even a small number of games. I'm, I'm being handed a great opening here. We're, we're going to take the Hex Gold Slash. Jawbone Duelist is also great. I don't know how this made it through, because it looks like the rare is taken, and another common was taken, so... Hmm. Nathan's the Grease's Holy Cow I'm trying out NVIDIA's new video super sampler, and honestly, these cards have never been clear, nor has Sean ever been so handsome. Oh! I think NVIDIA Tech has been sick lately. I truly think that NVIDIA GeForce Now is wizard magic. I love it. Weird. So, do we take an early Urobrask's Anointer? In order to get a lot of oil? I think, yeah. I think I'm going to give it a go. I think that the Bylia Skull Dweller is good, but I think red is just so deep. I love Furnace Punisher and Hex Gold Slash. I'm going to try a little bit of a subpar four drop. Oh, Jesus. A Silvok Battle Chair. I'm taking that shit. I'm taking that shit. I would love Predation Steward. God, I love the Silvok Battle Chair. I can't believe this is this deep. I think I think that people underestimate how, how good this turkey is. What's the record for the last bars? Everything, I think, has been 3-3 today. I think the first one was 2-3 or 3-3. This seems late. I'll get the Axiom Engraver. Right, comes in with oil. Works well with the Anointer. Maze's Mantle, or a Molten Rebuke. Hmm. I guess I'll get the Molten Rebuke. I mean, I, I, I don't think I'm going to be doing any sort of fancy switching or anything like that. I mean, if we're, like, mono-red splashing for a Silvok Battle Chair and Miglaws, I'll be happy. I don't even think you need that many green cards to be in good shape. Hey, Resistance Sky Warden! Oh, dude, we are getting rewarded. Mono-red is on the menu. Now, the thing that we really need is cards like Axiom Engraver or Predation Steward to just physically be on the board. These are great. Yeah, dude, the NVIDIA tech with, like, super sampling and all that stuff is incredible. Somehow there's a cephalopod sentry. But I'm not going to I'm not gonna get debated into it. Titanic growth is kind of combat trick. I'm, I'm content to run in this formato.
you know, the funny thing about these climbs is if you get, like, one good draft, you just leap forward. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, welcome. Welcome. Get in here, Oxida Finisher. I mean, like, if we're mono-red and we somehow wind up with, like, a ton of batter fists in the next pack amazingly, yeah, sure, great. Is, is something happening with... Oh. Full shock spitter or copper long legs. I don't mind if I do. Alright. Alright, that's good. Was is there is there stuff happening with CSGO 2? CSGO 2 becoming a thing? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Nathan Degrees is also Dan. Did you see the new Chaos Dwarves trailer for Total War Warhammer? No, I didn't. I didn't at all. Total War Warhammer 3 is a game I think I should have played a lot more. I played it a wee bit. What? Last pick, Whisper of the Dross. Get out of here. Makes sense, dude. Black is so bad in this fucking set. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the Barbed Batter Fist. And we're going to continue to... Hope that we get more oil cards and run a second Urabrask's Anointer. Because this these turkeys wheel. This is exactly what we need, though. Look at this. Affinity for equipment. We got the Volshock Splitter. We got the Barbed Batter Fist. Black Sun's Twilight would be splashable. I mean, yeah, but... It's a Barbed Batter Fist. You can't, you can't get me to say no to a Barbed Batter Fist. Um, oh, yeah. Volt Charges. Oh, yeah. That's the good stuff right there. I mean, we also have an Infectious Bite. We also have Ruthless Predation. But still, Volt Charge. All right. Better red than dead. You know what I mean? I mean, we might we might just go Mono Red. Just like some 16 land, Mono Red. Attack the enemies. I love the Silvog Battle Chair like so much, though. Oh, it's technically equipment, is it? <gasps> I never thought of a chair as equipment. How thrilling. What's affinity for equipment? Affinity generally means you have your mana cost reduced per instance of that thing. So affinity for equipment is we will reduce this cost by one per equipment. We're going to pick up the Ruthless Predation. We don't have any way to do toxic stuff, but we do have ways to ruthlessly predate things. This is looking like a mostly red deck with some, some pretty solid green stuff. I'm going to just tuck this away for now. I probably will run it, but I'll be monitoring the curve. Another viral spawning. I mean, okay. I mean, all right. It's kind of weird, but like a 3-3 three, three for 3 is okay. We're okay with a 3-3 three, three for 3. We're okay with it. We're not over the moon about it, but we're okay with it. Okay, this is where I do want the Predation Steward, because I just need more... I need more low drops, particularly low drops with oil. I have a hard time seeing this making the cut, but... Minus Blade Mantis is a great pickup. Expecting an Anointer. The Rust Vine Cultivators are great for us. Like, really, really great. Probably just the Chimney Rabble. Um, Axiom Engraver, welcome to the party. Where, where, where's our where's our pick nine Urabrask's anointer? There it is. Bing bong. It's Pal Sean. He knows what's going on. All right. So let's see. Uh, got some good stuff. 
not 100% sure on this, but plausibly the Volshock splitter is probably going to go. This is probably going to go. This is probably going to go. Woo! Nathan's degree says it would be so valid to just drop CSGO too with absolutely no build up. What in tarnation is happening here? Yeah, I actually think that no one's green if this if this wheels around. So I think that this was one of those weird drafts where there just wasn't good green stuff. Who knows? Expand the sphere. But yeah, like I, I actually think that big announcements can there's there's games for which big announcements and big pushes make sense. So something like Elden Ring, right? Oh, a single player game coming out. Oh, what? Like I literally think maybe everyone is mono white at this table. If this shit's wheeling. Annihilating glare last pick. Wow. All right. All right, what's what what do we want then? Volt charge or ruthless predation? I mean, the answer is volt charge, but open it wheels again, you know. All right. What was I talking about? Yeah, like a uh, single player game where you're trying to do a big, punchy release. Great. Yeah, I think that's I think that's terrific. You get an A plus from me. Uh, holy shit! Rewarded. Cinder slash Ravager. Welcome. Welcome to the party. So, literally, we just need anything that says oils. This is oil. Uh, it says oil, oil, oil. Yeah, we need a lot more oily guys. More often be here. We're slow gruel. We want, like, nothing but two drops with oil. But, yeah, like... Um... It makes sense for single-player games to have, like, a punch and then a... Retreat back to the shadows, right? Uh, there's a rebel salvo there. Uh, all right. Shall be taken. There's an Urabrask's forge. Shall be taken. I think I'm not actually running this viral spawning, which is just weird for me to say. We have... This is an insane amount of good stuff. We, I mean, we literally just need three two drops, and then I think that I think this is gonna hit seven. Um, this is kind of like a two drop. God. Oh, this is really bad, isn't it? Two, three, four, five. Jeez, this is not actually looking good. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I really needed to get a, uh, a copper long legs. I mean, we can still maybe get two copper long legs. This is quite this is quite quite bad for us. This is this is actually really this is really concerning news. Ugh. Alright, this this was nearly a seven winner, but now I think it's I think we're probably 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 hosed. We have an insane set of three drops here. Oh my god, what a what a gift. What a gift this copper long legs is. Oh. Hmm. But anyways, I think there's a lot of games where like a big loud launch is bad. You know, where you're trying to get everyone get the game. Ah, market, market, market. A lot of the games, <laughs> lol, that I that I think are quite good, or that have done launches that are quite good, kind of have this quality where like, um, they were kind of 
they launch and then like six months later, a year later, then they start marketing for their game. And I and I really quite like that. Probably not the Cackler. Probably not the Adaptive Spore Singer, but th this this leads us to a kind of a weird curve. There's 14 creatures. 15, 16. Or excuse me, 14, 15. I don't think we want this because we have like one, two, three, four, five, six removals. I think what we actually just want is another kind of basic creature. I think it's going to be this Cold Elf Cackler. In the Forge, kind of like a creature. Not in this format because I'm thinking about stability on the board. I don't think I want to go lower and land. Did I grab one of those spheres? With 17, I'm content to run a sphere. Alright. Um Gruel Bombs. I th I think that the Magmatic Sprinter is one of the worst cards that has ever existed in the world. Is it considered a creature? Yes. We have 14 creatures now. 15, 16. And I think that's good. Chair is a trap? No, it isn't. The chair fucking rules. That is that is the most that is the most magic player common thing to say like it's trap it's trap it's trap card sprinter forge combo it's kind of a non-bow man like i would rather just play something and stay alive than try to like punch in for a little bit more damage a little sooner yeah I i'm gonna run it like this Yeah, I mean, there's games like Hollow Knight that are single-player games that had this long tail release that sort of grew and grew and grew, but notably, like, Dota, League, Counter-Strike, Hearthstone. Like, Hearthstone, I think, had an amazing arc. Nice. Alright, we got the anointing. Free from Flesh is great. I don't disagree, but again, like, what what do we think that we want to cut in order to make this a reality? down. I don't think we need Hazardous Blast in this deck. But, um... Solid. But we have, like, several Urbrasks. We have two Urbrasks Anointers. We have the Chair. We have the Forge. We have a lot of ways to just punch through. Why not swing with the Engraver? Because we wanted the option of being able to tap it at the end of their turn to cycle, depending upon what we saw. Jesus, drown an Icker. Okay, fucker. Bastard, turkey. Alright, this is the game. We did it. We won. Alright. Bing bong. Alright, we're doing it. Wow, that's the best thing that's ever happened, huh? I think that Hazardous Blast is one of the most 
common examples of a card that does something that is so big. Like, it can it can just win the game. It's crazy. Proliferate this. Yeah. I think, this is, I think this is the game. Skrelv! I shoot him in the face. Yeah, like, like, uh, Hazardous Blast can feel so unbelievably, ridiculously amazing when it pops off. It can also do nothing a high percentage of the time. And so it creates this really polarizing thing where, in terms of perception, Hazardous Blast can be this... Oh, man, I'm almost there. Oh, I can almost get the... Oh, oh, I didn't quite get to the win. Or you go, I oh, anticipation, anticipation. Oh, I cast out this blast for the best feeling ever. Oh, my God. Kiss your wife. Champagne on the face. Yeah, that looks good to me. But the thing is that I, I think Hazardous Blast is 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 fine. I think, I think it's a fine card. But I think that the question is like, what is it trying to do? What is the effectiveness of? So here, here I will swim because I, I I don't want the option. I'm literally just gonna Urbras next turn. You know, it's kind of a question of like, what, what are we trying to do? What's the overall arc that we're trying to achieve in the game? I think it'll determine if we think that it's actually useful in our deck. And I think that we have enough cards like Urbrask's Anointer, Volt Charge, things that just punch in for damage in a very sort of simple way. That I think that we don't really need a Hazardous Blast. Urbrass anointers are actually all right. They do some good stuff. Hey, Sin Victor. Good to see you, man. Happy 11 months. It's been watching a lot longer than 11. More like 11 years. Ha-ha! <laughs> Happy 11 years, then. I'll say it. I'll be the first one to admit it. Might cycle Lattice Blade Mantis. More of these. I'll trade for the bird, it's fine. Oh. Oh. Yeah, discard mantis hit forest. Yep, that is that is the way that it goes, indeed. Technically, this was a lethal play, but, like, I'm owning so hard. My assumption is that they do have some stuff. Seeing lots of breaks. It shoots it. Gotcha! Bang! 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 This turn is, like, a really good encapsulation of what I mean by... It can feel really good to pull off, but it's not necessarily... Good. Because, like, look at this turn that just happened. We could have gone for the play where we swung with nine points of damage. But instead what we did is we swung with eight points of damage to set ourselves up more effectively. All right. Set, set ourselves up more effectively for the long term. 
this a little bit is like what I'm trying to do. With excluding a hazard. So if I swing like this, if this is not blocked, if this is blocked, this is five, six, seven, eight, right? So if you don't block this, you die. But if you do block it, we have the situation that you see before you. All right, we're doing some stuff. Gruel, Gruel's doing it. Spaceman says, how's Blast is the most talked about card on this channel? Yeah, 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 because I mean, I think that it's, there's a reason Hazardous Blasts are always wheeling around. Because they're just not that great. And if you have, like we have a few thousand people watching right now. And so, if even 10 of them have had positive, amazing experiences with Hazardous Blast. Those 10 people are going to go, Hazardous Blast! And come in. And again, it's not that they're incorrect. It's that it's just, it's not cut and dry. And that, therefore, I think it's like a really interesting card to talk about and to discuss. Sure would like a green mana. I do declare I would sure love a green mana. So Voidwing Hybrid is a little bit of a rough card to be up against because we deal with cards like this by just fucking killing them. Generally, we're okay against a lot of the toxic decks because we're just so fast. All right. We can remove three and destroy that. That's pretty cool. So we'll go to five, but I think that's actually pretty good in this situation, right? We're, we're coming in pretty scary. Got them to 12. Next turn, we can roll charge. Pick off the Void Wing Hybrid. So that's a bit of an obnoxious turkey. All right, we got a lot of proliferation things coming. We're going to go to five. That is some good shit right there. So let's let's see. So we go. We blast. Get this guy. Yeah. So that proliferates. So we're gonna go to six. I realize I should have done it in this order. That's okay. So we're gonna go to eight next turn, and I I think it's it's tough to it's tough to go down. to double proliferate on this turn. Probably you'll need to leave some blockers up. It's fine that that one goes, because we have the Rebel Salvo. This could just be hard death. This is five. These together are four. So I assume there's one removal spell. Probably hit the Lattice Blade Mantis, but now that this is dead. I don't need to leave it back. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, this is, this is some spooky shit. All right. Now, if we lose, it's because of the ordering that we did with the predation. But if we win, then I'm the best player who's ever lived. There it is. This is kind of why I like Gruul. You, you, ju you just beat ass. You know what I mean? Best player confirmed. It feels good. 
We have a lot of bombs, but we do we do have some early game fragility that I, I worry about. I worry about me. Because I'm a megalomaniac. <laughs> Alright. I'm gonna have to feed my cat some gravy. Soon. You doing okay, princess? Where are you? Actually, are you? Hell is my cat? Okay, well this is this is the greatest opening hand ever. Um, and oh my God, I'm gonna cry. She's eating. Oh my god. Oh. She's eating. Oh my god, my cat has uh, had a liver infection. And she just started, she stopped, stopped eating. We have to like fucking inject her with medicine that makes her gag and she just... God, she's fucking horking. She is putting it down, dude. God, this is awesome. This is amazing. Oh my God, she's eating. Because basically what the doctor said is that her liver is going to be fine as long as she keeps eating. Because if she's still eating, then she won't keep losing weight and her body will heal on its own. Oh, we just came down. We just had a little snack. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, my God, dude. This is the best shit ever. Ever, man. Ever. Yes. I don't even care that we're absolutely crushing Juggler 314. How amazing is that? And we're, we're crushing Juggler 314 on 314. It's incredible, even. I can't believe we got a Urbrass Forge. Flying Fusa Sean, I got randomly recommended your uh, Let's Learn StarCraft series from like five years ago. It was so cute. Ooh. I, I really like that series. Oh, we found a dead man. It's Juggler314. Is it to any target? Damn. Vault Charge has been lethaling all over the place. All over the place. Diamond, Diamond 2. Gus Parvis says, I also get old recommendations from Hearthstone Era with Young Sean. Yeah, I like, I like, I like my gray. I like my gray quite a bit. I'm a big fan of my gray hair. Like you just don't care. Love you says, I first discovered you and you were talent for Dota 2 tourneys. I've been talent for one Dota 2 tournament. <laughs> then that's that. I think maybe if I spend a few more years learning Dota 2, I might be qualified to step back into the role. Oh my god, Barbed Batterfist and Kaldotha Cackler? Mm. Oh. Oh. I will I will keep this. I'm gonna hang on to this. Are we uh, what are we? Are we three and oh? Are we four and oh? Or Goddess has been rewatching the Funday Mondays, and I don't know how to say this, but you've mellowed quite a bit with age. I think that's a little bit of an optical illusion, Oregata. Because the thing is, I'm pretty similar then to how I was now. But the difference is that Oh, I won. When I was doing those broadcasts, I was trying to push out a lot of energy for like uh, two hours, and then I was done. 
and especially Funday Monday, I would use all of my energy from the weekend to push that shit out on that day. Absolutely. And so as a result, I just seemed really high energy because I was doing nothing but trying to present and push out energy and talk and push and push and push and push. I was trying to get the energy out, get the energy out, get the energy out, perform, perform, go, day nine. But when it comes to, and especially, yeah, funny way it was like super high energy and all the other ones. Oh, all right, I'm shooting that shit. I'm literally just shooting it straight up. I'll just do this. this is We're just doing this. So nowadays, I just sort of like stream and I'm just like myself. Like take for instance the Bing Bong story that I told an hour ago or something like that. All right. That story, I presented a lot of energy for like three minutes, and then I'm going back just being like doop 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 doop. -doo. I'm getting a little bit close to death here. So I need to I need to threaten here. Well, I think I maybe should equip that. This villain kind of needs to figure out a way to kill me on this turn. So if it's like a swing out, I'll yeah, I block. Yeah, so that's that I mean this is actually good for us, because now we just win, right? Don't we just? Because th this guy has trample and haste. This guy has trample. Might as well play this out. There's there's eight points total of trample damage. Oh, I forgot about the plus one plus one. Yeah, so there's trample death. Feels good. That deck has a lot of bombs. Yeah, I, I'm capable of being very high energy. Um, I would say overall I'm a very high energy person, but I don't kind of have this persistent, yelly, endless output like I would attempt to do for the older broadcasts. And I prefer this. It is way easy to, if I have a surge of energy, to just present a surge of energy. If I'm feeling kind of meh, just present that, as opposed to feeling meh, and then going, well, time to like pound some coffee because we're live in 15 minutes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, we're gonna get MIG loss. We're absolutely gonna crunch some mazes. Honestly, Vigilance Menace is nasty on this turkey. If we cast our pack one, pick one rare. Uh, that was this one, right? I think so. What kind of deck would Bing Bong be? It would. It wouldn't exist because it would be no. Swag. Yeah, I think a seven zero would be would be great. I don't know why we don't just get a seven zero. Why not? I think it might be okay to just block here because if my opponent does no board building, we'll have Miglaws.
Okay. That's that's quite a quite an expenditure of rebel salvo. I mean, plausibly, we can get hosed here. So... Vigilance and Menace seems good to me. Seen Lord of the Ring previews? I mean, I understand that there's Lord of the Ring magic stuff, but I'll be honest, I don't. I'm not that into Lord of the Rings. I think the Lord of the Rings movies are phenomenal. I think they're very good. But I don't know. I'm just not that interested in the world of Middle Earth. And, you know, all the all the names and language. And then Framadier said to Gukachu, you can't do that with a sword. You know, and all this, like, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's great. Sure it is. It sounds incredible. <laughs> but I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> four plus two minus two. Yeah, it's not going to do it, huh? And I'm sure, like... It's a book. Yeah, no, it's it's it's, ju it's just it's just all I'm saying is that it's just not that interesting to me. It's just not that interesting to me. To me personally, it's just not that interesting. To me personally, it's just not that interesting. It's I mean again, it's it's cool, but it's like the world of Warhammer 40k. I could read about that for one million years. I could read um, all the weird stories and sub-factions, dilemmas and dramas, dioramas. I could read that shit. It, 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 it's incredible. Oh, this turkey. All right, well. Finally. You know, I can play the Resistance Skywarden. This is something to do. I'm not going to swing with this event. I might actually just blow up this Volshock spitter. I may very well. Yeah, the thing is that, like, I think that Lord of the Rings is an objectively amazingly rich world. That's super fantastically thought out. Boy, I'm glad I waited on the Cinder Slash Ravager, huh? Um, okay. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna... truly incredible. Don't think that I don't think that it is. It's like in terms of what gets me going. Elves and like gnomes and like the real traditional high fantasy just doesn't quite do it for me. It's just, it just is not it's not that interesting to me. Now if it blends and dips into horror I'm really fucking into it. Dark Souls, Elden Ring. Oh! Fuck yeah! All right. That's vigilance, right? It's pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. So, so, so I'm just sort of like, you know. <laughs> Joseph says, bro, you are pushing 40. I know it's... It, I'm actually 36, and it's like public information. It's crazy. And the weirdest thing to me is that... Time grows linearly, like bro.
let's see here. How do I how do I want to deal with this bastard? Age of Sigmar, Age of Sigmar has enough horror elements to it that it's interesting to me. Oh shit, I've run out of oil. Run out of oil. I'm gonna play this trades with the indoctrination attendant. Dude, this one. Bang. Yeah, like dungeons and dragons. A lot of the swords and sorcery stuff there is kind of like, eh. And it's almost like it was the first. So it established all these tropes and people are doing variations on the tropes. And I like the variations. But like the original one, I'm like, eh. Oxidative finisher is pretty funny, I'm being honest. Alright, let's roast some goats roast my goats. I'll be chilling for a little bit. I see what was the Dark Souls lore. It's just hot garbage, Imo. Insert lazy. Write in your own thoughts here. That I wanna say that's actually just like incorrect. And not the lore is what I is what I feel compelled to state. And everything was on this man. First strike trample is fucking really bad, huh? Oh well. Because I, I would say that the idea of... of Okay, so here, here's, here's my opinion of game lore and game mythos. Ha! Didn't expect the double block. Um, and here I come. With the crack back. Gotcha. Yeah. What I want distributed like this. So, like, when it comes to lore and mythos in games, or actually just world building, even in, like, linear media and stuff, world building and lore is, I would say, 5% what the characters are saying and what is being presented in a sort of, like, like verbal way. I feel like it's 95% Hey, we're walking up to this structure. Who's the structure for? Why is it built this way? Um, what what's what are the people that work here? What are the people that? All right, you're gonna you're gonna do a bunch of stuff. Okay. This is a little bit of a, a, little bit of a pickle. Let's see. So this is five total first strike damage. So. I just, I just say no blocks. Great. If you, if you stumble upon a, you know, village that has, that's like falling apart, that's ruined in some way, someone need to, needed to figure out what should be placed there so that artists could make it, so that um, combat designers could make monsters and go, oh, that doesn't quite align with what was happening here. I think now is maybe the time to do this quad blocko. Still have a Silvog battle chair in here somewhere. And these little turkeys on through. Great. Very good. Okay. Well, that's really bad. That's another huge one. Hmm. 
Hmm. Huh. Let's see. And I think that's what is interesting about these Souls games, is that there's very little dialogue that is presented. Um, compared to the insane amount of time that you spend just, like, looking at shit and fighting against stuff and doing things there. Oh, what do we, what do we have here? And so, almost all of what is presented to you in the game is context clues, environments, things like this. And they're presented plainly, like, oh, here's the building, and here's the monsters in the building, and there you go. So, on one hand, it is both not explicit, it's not telling you what's going on. I think that guy just kills us, huh? This turkey gutter too. So it, it, it's both not explicit in terms of communicating with you, but it's also very clearly incredibly rich and deep, which happens to be that it invites you to want to think through and come up with your own theories of what's going on and so on. I lost. But I think that that only it works because the lore is, is rich and interesting and deep behind it. Because, I mean, honestly, there's been a number of games that have tried to do the Souls-style thing, which, like, they're, we're not going to tell you any information. It's all going to be environment and bosses and context clues. And they just they just don't resonate. Like, um, well, they don't resonate in the same capacity that Souls games do. So an example might be, like, Titan Souls. That was very explicitly trying to reference Dark Souls in its construction. Ooh, this is a nasty... This is a nasty. And I, I enjoy Titan Souls, but it didn't really stick. Or a game like Hyper Light Drifter has more rich lore. I want to do this. Has more rich lore than Titan Souls, I would say. And then you have something like Hollow Knight that has, like, even more rich stuff. I'm just gonna shoot this and swing it for damage. So I feel like I'm just sort of like sliding up and down the scale of like the richness of world and environment and stuff going on there. I literally just killed you, dude. So let's see. So this is... Uh, 3-1. So if I do this hitting that... Keeps the pain train going, huh? See if we can do this. Complex sequence of spells. Killed the golem too. And I would have I would have lost my, my turkey. Whoa, that's a good one to go. And I didn't wish to lose my turkey. We've been out.
Yeah, so I, I think that this is this is an example of of crediting to Souls games because they're just really, really amazingly rich compared to everyone. Creation gives plus one, plus two. That's right. For some reason I thought I was giving plus one, plus one. Nice. Nice. It's too busy thinking about other games that are similar to the Dark Souls, but not quite as successful as Dark Souls. I think I, I need to get this guy to go away. I need one more object with oil on it. That sure doesn't fucking help. Definitely would have picked off the Icar Plate Golem had I recalled correctly. Doing a lot of damage here soon. Holy shit, this is what I'm trying to do to you, dude. Oh, I, 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 I fucking thought it was passing to the next phase where I could react. Oh god. Oh god! It's all falling apart! Alright, I mean, this, this could plausibly slow the game down. I think I'm gonna cycle the anointer, to be honest. That game was stinky, stinky game, stinky game. We misplayed, and then our opponent got a bunch of momentum. Boo. Boo. This is also one of the reasons why I want to have maybe two or three more oil cards if I'm running the anointers. We didn't quite get there. Didn't quite do it. Those losses hurt. I mean... I don't hurt that much. Oh, this is a weird hand. All right, looks like we have some four twos, baby. Uh oh, predating four twos. All right, we we, we can kill that. Holy shit, Kemba Cot into Malkator? Fuck. You guys, an app. absolutely gamer. So, Malkator is unlikely to proc again, but this Kemba Khan during is one that I'm very, very concerned about. We're gonna let this swing once. Almost certainly. I've been really good at drawing my predations, huh? Because this has reach, which weirdly it's going to interact bizarrely with the Gataxian Raptor, because the Gataxian Raptor can absolutely swing once. That's no doubt. But if it swings, then it needs to spend oil to pump itself. And I think that given that the game is kind of slowing down, thanks to this absolutely housed copper long legs, my god. I think it's fair to just chill for a little bit. This is at the beginning of your end step, so I should put a stop there. Ta-da! Counterspell! This copper long legs is just absolutely crunching. Alright. Here we go. Coming on in. Pow. There you go. And a block. I'll do this post damage. 
And if you counter it, it's one for one. It's fine. Whoa! Look at this! My opponent didn't counter the Chimney Rebel, but did counter the Hex Gold Slash. That's intimidation right there, baby. Now he can Ruthless Predation on the Gataxian Raptor as well. And it's very difficult for the Gataxian Raptor to get to keep. Yeah, I mean, th there's something that Artosa said that I just think about a lot that's, like, so funny. How he said, games shouldn't have stories. Oh, okay. Oh, that's... Uh, this is total turkey town. All right, we're predating the Kemba Ka. It's fine. It's fine. Kemba Ka needs to go. Play one of these. I mean, it's it's less value, but I I do feel that we kind of need to have some. This guy. We do kind of need to have a little bit more oomph in the game. These things trading would be fine. I just th I just think it's like a, such a funny comment because like I do feel like the games that I played when I was a kiddo were really gameplay first. Just a lot of gameplay first kind of games, you know? Because, you know, it's just like. Wasn't any space on the cartridge. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Holy shit! What a bunch of fucking bombs! Oh, it sucks. Fucking sucks so much. Dude, Kemba Ka, Malkator, and Blue Sun's Twilight. Like, three good rares on color. Ugh. No blocks. All right. Yeah, I guess I guess I got to do this and just play it out. If this was a predation steward, this game would have been so different. I assume my opponent doesn't have that much more powerful stuff cuz this this is a pretty incredible set of cards. I mean, this is the only common that we've seen. <laughs> okay. I mean, that'll resolve. Jeez, Louise. Oh man, this is this is just brutal. I don't think there's a single thing that we can really draw that helps us here anymore. I don't think there's anything we can draw. Hey, we got an engraver, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. So I think that the way that we can attempt to win is we double block one of these Urbrask's anointers. And we rebel salvo the other anointer. And I think that's about what we have. That is it. Alright, so... Hey, they let us keep the engraver. Fuck yeah. Not great for us.
I need to get slightly lucky here, but, you know. Holy shit, a Meldweb Curator. Oh my god, we're fucked, dude. He's just gonna put this one back on top. Oh my god. It's the best deck I've ever seen. Oh. Oh my god. Okay, I, I don't think there was any way that we could have ever had anything pan out to help us there, but... You know, five and three is alright. Five and three is alright. I think I sold my house that game. Woo!